Qualifying for the Mexico City Grand Prix is over, and in a shock to a lot of people, Charles Leclerc took pole position, and it is a Ferrari 1-2. But what did we learn, and how did this happen? Well, I am going to be taking a look at the data and doing a data analysis from qualifying. Now let's get to the video. As usual, I'll be talking about Aston Martin, McLaren, Ferrari, Mercedes, and Red Bull later on, so stick around for that. As mentioned, Charles Leclerc took pole position, but it shocked a lot of people, especially because early on, his pace was not that great. Circuit evolution in Mexico was not massive either, and you can see that when you look at all the times for Charles Leclerc. His times today were all over the place. His lap on mediums, for example, was better than his next lap on softs in Q1. In Q2, he did improve, and then in Q3, he set his best lap on the first run, because in the second lap, he could not even compete with the first run, as the circuit conditions changed slightly. Let's now take a look at his first run in Q1, and compare it to his fastest lap in Q3 so we can see where the differences were from the beginning to the end of the session. As you can see on the soft tyres in Q3, Leclerc is able to get an incredible exit from Turn 3 with the extra grip from the tyres and really that is where all the advantage is. The large advantage at the end of the lap as well is from Leclerc being able to rotate the car through the tight and twisty corners in the stadium section as the soft tyres is still able to provide excellent grip at this point when compared to the mediums. On the softs in Q3 as well, Leclerc is able to carry a little bit more speed through the S sections, but it is not by as much as you would imagine. The pole position lap time from this year is 6 tenths of a second faster than it was last year, which is not really as much as I would have thought. Remember, they are running a step softer tyres this year, but with an extra year of development as well, you would have expected the times to be a little bit faster than that. In the midfield, things are really heating up in the championship battle for 7th place. Whilst that might not sound exciting for a lot of fans, for the teams it is massively important, as there are millions and millions of dollars in prize money riding on each position. This means that the teams need to maximise their sessions, so the question is what teams did manage that and what teams did not manage to maximise their potential. Well, one team that had a bad day was Williams, as Logan Sargent is starting the race from last place, and Alex Albon qualified in 14th place. But his time was good enough to get through to Q3 until it was deleted. Let's compare his legal lap in Q2 to that of Joe Guanyu's Q2 lap to see where he lost out. As you can see here for a long while, it's actually advantage Albon as he is looking strong and confident. Down the pitch straight, there is nothing to tell between them, which I find rather surprising given that usually we do see that the Williams is a lot faster than a car like the Alfa Romeo. On the entry into the S section in the middle of the lap, Albon starts to pull away as he has good confidence, and then as the corners tighten up towards the end of the lap, you can see Joe just starts to carry more and more speed compared to Albon. Likely that is because the lap is at the end of the session for Joe, so track conditions were more favourable, so he can carry a little bit more speed. Also, you can see that through the stadium section, Joe is much faster, and that is how Albon is eliminated. For Alex, this is a missed opportunity. Williams have been looking very fast at times this weekend, but this result is definitely a step back for them, and it will make the race much harder than they would probably like it to be. So, Williams threw away qualifying, but one team in the midfield that did not throw away qualifying is Alpha Tauri. Sonoda had a power unit penalty, which meant that his qualifying was all about helping Daniel Ricciardo, and he did just that in Q1 and Q2. But in Q3, Ricciardo put in an excellent lap for fourth place in today's race. Let's compare his lap to Leclerc, who is on pole position. As you would expect, Ferrari has the edge in a straight line performance, which is essentially free lap time, given the Alfa Tauri is a draggy car. However, with the Honda Power Unit, he is closer than he usually is to Charles Leclerc, showing that they have good performance with the altitude. And really, it was that straight line performance that secured Leclerc and Sainz victory over Ricardo today, because through the corners, especially the tight ones, Ricardo is faster than Charles Leclerc. The Alpha Tauri is working beautifully this weekend, and right now they will be wishing that they took the power unit penalty in Texas instead of Mexico for Yuki Tsunoda. I just want to say that if you are enjoying the video, then I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. I'm on my way to 5k subs, and I would appreciate it if you helped me get there. 
Now though, let's get back to the video and let's talk about the top 5 teams, starting with Aston Martin. For Aston Martin, it was yet another difficult day as Lance Stroll was yet again out in Q1. And Fernando Alonso is lining up in 13th place on the grid, and he too would have likely been out in Q1, if not for his well-timed spin. Their pace has been frankly terrible, and that podium result in Zanvoort feels like a lifetime ago now. Let's compare the Q2 laps of Alonso to Joe, who of course finished Q2 in 10th place. Aston Martin are lacking a little bit in straight line performance, but that's not really what is shocking. Look through the tighter, twisty corners. You can see that Alonso is not carrying the same amount of speed as Joe Guan Yu. Not only that, but he is having to back off sooner than Joe, and he's not really able to get onto power any sooner than Joe, so it's just lost lap time. For Aston Martin, this continued fall is getting worse and worse with each passing race. They are lucky that the season is almost over, otherwise they could have been at risk of losing 5th place, to Alpine. For McLaren, qualifying for Mexico has been a massive disappointment in my opinion. The team were looking very, very strong, but yet Norris found himself out in Q1 and at the back of the grid. For some reason, he never completed a bank lap on the mediums, and this put him on the back foot for the rest of the session. This was then not helped as Norris had to drive through the yellow flags from Alonso's well-timed spin, and in the end, that knocked him out in Q1. For his teammate Oscar Piastri, he was a little bit anonymous so far this weekend, but he has been quietly getting on with it, and he finds himself in 7th place on the grid. Let's compare his Q3 lap against Charles Leclerc's, and as you can see the McLaren doesn't quite have the top speed of the Ferrari, and you can see that on the run into turn 4, Piastri is on the brake slightly sooner than Leclerc is. Through the stadium section though, rather surprisingly, Piastri was still slower than Charles Leclerc. Remember, Ricardo was faster than Leclerc through this section, which goes to show just how impressive Ricardo really was here. For McLaren, they are safe from Aston Martin behind in the standings pretty much now, but this result from qualifying will not help them in their bid to at least try and catch Ferrari. It was always going to be an uphill task to catch them, but now it seems like they are going to be resigned to finishing in 4th place in the Constructors Championship. For Ferrari, they pulled out a mighty lap in Q3 from frankly nowhere. All through practice and in Q1 and Q2, both Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz were nowhere near Max Verstappen, and you can see that when you compare all of their times. So, how did they actually do it? Well, the track temperature fell in Q3, and this potentially helped Ferrari. Usually they can fire their tyres up better than their rivals, and Red Bull is typically kind on their tyres, but subsequently they can't fire them up as quickly as Ferrari, and the drop in track temperature could have helped Ferrari by knocking Red Bull and Mercedes out of their small window. Let's now look at the laps of Sainz and Leclerc. Throughout the lap, Leclerc was committed more than Sainz and could carry more speed, and he was later on the brakes. Throughout the weekend, Leclerc has pretty much had a bit of an edge over Sainz, and he was able to carry this through qualifying. In Sector 3 in the stadium section, however, Sainz starts to claw back time, and he gets a better exit, and maybe that is because Leclerc's tyres were starting to overheat from being faster through the S section. For the race, Ferrari have themselves set up very nicely, however it could very easily all come done into Turn 1 if Max Verstappen gets a great start. For Mercedes, qualifying fell away from them in Q3. Things in Q1 and Q2 were looking pretty good, as they had strong pace, but ultimately when the conditions changed for Q3 ever so slightly, they could not stay with the Ferraris. And because of this, Hamilton is in 6th place and Russell is in 8th place. Let's take a look at Hamilton and Leclerc. Looking at this, it is T4 where it all comes undone for Hamilton. He does not quite have the top speed, despite getting a better exit from turn 3 compared to Charles Leclerc, but he is then ultimately earlier on the brakes, and this is where he is really giving away free lap time. As the lap wears on, Hamilton starts to come back at Charles, especially as he is able to carry more speed through the S corners, and towards the end of the lap, he's also faster. For Mercedes, they will be disappointed with this, but they should have strong race pace, and they could come back and be at least one of the two Ferrari cars. And finally for Red Bull, Perez was unable to impress in front of his home fans, and he has been out-qualified by Daniel Ricciardo in the Alfa Tauri. But for Max Verstappen, he was so close to pole position, but he just missed out. 
He was the only driver that was really able to improve on the final run in qualifying, but it was not enough to match Charles Leclerc. In the main race, I anticipate they will be stronger, and we could see Max Verstappen in the lead by turn one, if he does get a good launch off of the line. So, with that in mind then, what are my final predictions for the race? Well, the top midfield driver will be Daniel Ricciardo in the Alfa Tauri, but what about the top five? Well, in P5, I think it will be Sergio Perez, P4 will be Carlos Sainz, P3 will be Charles Leclerc, P2 will be Lewis Hamilton, and Max Verstappen will win the Mexican Grand Prix. But what do you guys think? In the comment section down below, let me know, and as always, comment, leave a like, and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.